Jamie Osuna In 2019, news broke out of a heinous crime at the Kokoran State Prison in California, where a prisoner, Jamie Osuna, had tortured and beheaded his fellow cellmates. But this was not the first time for Osuna to be in the news. In 2011, he was arrested for murdering a 37-year-old mother of six, Yvette Pena. The case took more than six years before Osuna finally entered a guilty plea in 2017 to avoid the death penalty. He grew up with a stepfather who tortured him as a child. Police reports show that his stepfather tied him to a tree and whipped him when he was five years old. His uncle also threw a brick at him when he was young. After his conviction in 2017, he left the county jail and got transferred to Kokoran State Prison. Two years after his transfer, the Kokoran State Prison received a new prisoner named Luis Romero. Romero got arrested when he was 17 years old and had spent 27 years in prison. On 7 March 2019, Romero arrived at the Kokoran State Prison. The guards put him in the same cell as Jamie, who had suffered borderline personality disorder as a child and never had a cellmate since he arrived. On 9 March 2019, about 24 hours after his arrival, the prison guards discovered Romero's dismembered body. Osuna showed no reaction to the judge's ruling. He appeared bored throughout the 90-minute proceedings, most of which he spent slouched in a chair with his eyes closed. Jamie Osuna, 34, has a Joker smile tattooed on his face and a pentagram on his forehead. There's hardly a spot on his face untouched by ink. In interviews with former reporter Olivia Lavoice, Osuna described the thrill he got from killing Peña, whose torture slang he admitted to and received a sentence of life without parole. For Osuna, murder is a rush. And it's alleged, after Peña's death, he indulged in it again. Abel Galagos Abel Galagos appeared in Jefferson County District Court on Friday and was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole, plus 163 years for his role in kidnapping and killing 28-year-old Simon Duran. Galagos and two others, Alonzo Quintana and Rene Francisco Rosales, were found guilty of multiple counts for their role in the retaliation murder. Duran, identified in early 2018, Quintana, in an Adams County lineup in a shooting that she had witnessed. Galagos approached Duran on social media and she met with him, Rosales, and others at a house in Denver. Galagos then took Duran to a parking lot where he met Quintana. There, the two men assaulted her in the back seat of a car. They then drove her to a secluded spot in Golden where they shot her 10 times and then poured gasoline on her body and set it on fire. Judge Philip McNulty, the sentencing judge in this case, said that he was appalled by the casualness of this crime and disregard of human life. You can't live among us anymore. Mark Ludensky A confessed Michigan cannibal was sentenced to life in prison for the Christmas Eve killing and mutilation of a man he met through a dating app in 2019. Mark Ludensky, 53, was handed a life sentence without the possibility of parole by a Shiawassee County judge after he pleaded guilty in September to the sickening slaughter of a 25-year-old hairdresser named Kevin Bacon. Ludensky was convicted of first-degree murder as well as disinterment and mutilation of a dead body, for which he received an additional 11-month sentence that will be served concurrently. He confessed to stabbing Bacon in the back and removing parts of his body, which he told investigators he ate. Bacon, of Swartz Creek, was reported missing by family members when he didn't show up to breakfast on Christmas morning in 2019. Investigators found his car parked at a Dollar General store and then tracked his last location to Lutensky's home in Bennington Township. His butchered body was found three days later hanging upside down from the ceiling of Latunky's basement. Investigators said Lutensky and Bacon met via the LGBTQ dating app Grinder. Lutensky lured his victim to his home, where he brutally murdered him. Lutensky initially pleaded not guilty due to insanity but reversed course and pleaded guilty to murder right before the case was set to go to trial. Following the plea, Shiawassee County Judge Matthew Stewart was given the power to determine if the murder charge would be classified as first-degree or second-degree murder. He ruled that the killing was premeditated first-degree murder in October. Joseph D'Angelo the notorious Golden State Killer eluded authorities for more than four decades, but police have finally caught their man. While some would expect a monster in handcuffs, Joseph James D'Angelo was a seemingly ordinary former police officer living near Sacramento until April 2018. The 74-year-old was described by former co-workers as a regular Joe, despite his serious demeanor and non-existent smile. 
He's said to have been a meticulous homeowner, with attention to detail certainly befitting an ex-cop. But suddenly, in 2018, he was charged with unspeakable crimes. The Golden State Killer committed more than 50 rapes and 12 murders across California throughout the 1970s and 1980s. In over 40 years, nobody has been convicted of any of these heinous crimes until now. On June 29, 2020, Joseph D'Angelo pleaded guilty to 26 charges in a raping and killing spree. D'Angelo, who sat in a wheelchair and was covered by white face masks as victims and family members gave testaments, rose out of the wheelchair and spoke free of the face covering. He was ultimately charged with 13 counts of murder, with additional special circumstances, as well as 13 counts of kidnapping for robbery. He received 11 consecutive life sentences for the crimes he did admit to, ensuring that he'll eventually die in prison. Quentin Smith, Eric Juring, and Anthony Tony Morelli were police officers who were murdered on February 10th, 2018 in Westerville, Ohio, after responding to a domestic violence incident. Juring, 39, and Morelli, 54, were shot and killed by Quentin Smith, who had punched and choked his wife, leading to her making a 911 hang-up call. When the police officers arrived, Smith shot Juring three times in both of his arms and in his head. Morelli was shot once in the chest with the bullet going through his heart and lungs. Juring, who had been a police officer for 16 years in Westerville, died at the scene, while Morelli, who had been a police officer for 30 years, died later in the hospital. Smith, who was 30 at the time and who was prohibited from having a gun, was shot five times but survived. After the murders, Smith was taken to the Ohio State University Wexner Medical Center, where he stayed for eight days. Smith was charged with the murders on February 11th. He was then transported to Franklin County Jail, where he was held without bail. The defense argued that Smith did not intend to kill Juring or Morelli, but that he reacted in a moment of panic and confusion. The prosecutors argued that Smith purposely killed the victims, who he knew were police officers, so that he wouldn't go back to jail. The jury recommended Smith be sentenced to life imprisonment without parole. Smith was admitted to the Warren Correctional Institution on December 5th, 2019, where he is serving his sentences. That was it for today's video. We hope you like it. If you want to see some more interesting videos, then make sure to subscribe to our channel. Hit the like button.